where I could talk about certain things. But now I'll, I'll start here, for instance. When I was probably four years old, my parents gave me a true history of the world. What they described to me is that there was a society known as Atlantis, that they traced their belief system back to the Atlantean warlocks of old. Then there was a cataclysm on the Earth, which geologically happened at 9,600 BC and is written about in the book The Day the Earth Nearly Died by authors Allen and Dallaire. The authors Allen and Dallaire have written three books on the 9,600 BC Earth Cataclysm. The Day the Earth Nearly Died is one. Another book is Catacly uh, Cataclysm, 2000, uh, 9,600 BC. <coughs> and either one of those books is a great history lesson in geography and in Earth history because the destruction of the previous high civilizations on Earth, 10,000 BC, opened the door for what we are experiencing in the world today. It appears that the Atlanteans survived the Holocaust of 9,600 BC better than others and were able to set up a renewed society in Sumer and then in Egypt and the Indus Valley. So they got a head start on their rivals in the Pacific Ocean which would be the Lemurians, which basically, from my knowledge, became the uh, indigenous peoples of the world. My parents always believed that from the planet and star system you know, Sirius, a group of beings came millennia ago, possibly as much as 500,000 years ago, I'm not sure, but many, many eons ago, believe me, and manipulated the DNA of the human race and made some of the Atlantean warlocks a specific genome type different than most Homo sapiens. These people consider themselves the elite. Um, from research done, it would appear that 4% of the human race has this different genetic makeup. Now, they say that they're Illuminati, they've controlled the world since the cataclysm, and uh, they're not going anywhere. And they basically give their allegiance, the generational Satanists give their allegiance to this very small minority on top who would be considered the trillionaires of the world, who are deep, deep occultists, and people who believe that they are genetically different than the human race. The Uh, discussion of Sirius and the uh, beings that came here also uh, opens up a discussion that there are possibly other dimensions in our universe. And this was discussed also to me as a child. And that uh, the other dimensions and uh, the uh, Syrians basically have taken over the world and are running the world through a dark occult system. And even though people believe they are free, and in fact, they are not. One of the things that's done in the Illuminati system is physical 
marks may be put on a person so that people in the cult can recognize who is what, almost like the dots on the caste system people from India. For instance, I have a cattle prod mole on the side of my cheek, and this is to designate me as a manipulated slave. If someone I was doing business with was a cult and recognized what I was, he could simply flash an occult symbol at me and I would literally work for pennies on the dollar. Uh, some of the things that I went through personally with my parents. One of the first mind-splitting traumas to make a multiple personality uh, individual, that is mind control, is at the age of three to four, they're placed in a cage no bigger than a, uh, oh, I would guess a uh, small dog cage. The child is placed in the cage and you're literally bunched up to where you cannot even move. And then the cage is left alone for, oh, basically two, maybe two and a half, three days. So you're in that cage. You've already screamed yourself uh, hoarse. There's no point in yelling for help anymore. No one's going to come and help you. Then after two days, into the room walks your father, your savior. He's here. Unfortunately, it's not your father. It's the other inside him. He is in full other dimensional spiritual entity manifestation, and he is seething with what the Apostle Paul calls the absolute hate of the devil. And he looks at you with such utter hate, murderous hatred, and it's literally uh, the energy coming off him is something that I can't describe when these people really go into full other dimensional manifestation mode. It's not human. It's definitely not of this world, and it's definitely evil and malevolence beyond verbal description. So as a child, I looked up and saw that it wasn't my father there to rescue me. It was the enemy, and it was the enemy of all humanity. What this does to the child and what it did to me was literally my mind imploding. And this is called a primary split. And from that split, <coughs> many uh, programming and hypnotic suggestions are based. How the Illuminati actually do this programming and the in-depth manufacture of a slave is described in Fritz Springmeier's book, Monarch Mind Control, How to Build an, a Perfect Mind Control Slave. I'm not going to go into that. I'm just going to say that's one experience I went through as a child. Another experience would be the buried alive experience, very uh, popular. And basically, you're drugged probably a form of hallucinogenic. You are placed in a very tight coffin and lowered into a grave at the church of Satan. Your father, who is your primary handler, will dress up literally in the Father God garb of white flowing robes with long silver hair and beard and have a large book in his hand. And as you are, and this is 
a very deep hole they lower you into while you're uh, on hallucinogens. So you're already out of your mind. Uh, and you look up probably 10 feet, maybe more, and there is your father. Now, I recognize my father in this father god costume, but my mind instantly denied that. And my father had this giant book in his hand, and he screamed at me, this is the book of life, and your name is not in it. You are condemned. And you go lower and lower. And uh, the ritual basically imprints on your shattered mind, your split mind, that basically you're going to hell and there's nothing you can do about it. And even though consciously at that time I recognized my father, it didn't matter. The psychological damage was done. And uh, I, I just, you know, it, it's actually taken me years of thinking about that ritual to realize that for a brief moment I did recognize that God figure as my father, but immediately went into denial about it. Now, as my father and mother and some of the cult members would torture me, at one time when my father was torturing me extremely painfully for long periods of time with a car battery, uh, the car battery would be placed, the shock would be given at the base of the spine or the genitals, and it would hit your lower part of your brain like a sledgehammer. It's extremely painful throughout the entire body. By the time they do this over and over again, you're just begging for death. You don't want to, you, anything would be better than this. So, basically, my father says to me, would you like to join with Jesus? Now I go, who's that? And he says, Jesus, the son of a God, you want to join with him? And I'm like, will he get me out of here? And my father goes, yeah. Well, I joined with Jesus. Uh, the torture continued. And basically, the reason for that is anything that's good and wholesome in this world has to be destroyed in a person's mind. You have to have a complete distrust of anything that represents morality, community, goodness, you have to know deep inside your program mind that it's false and that it cannot be trusted and that only the cult is where you belong. So basically, when a child is raped and tortured in the name of that society's uh, primary religion, what happens to the person subconsciously after that is every time they see a church, they're subconsciously triggered into memories of the mind control torture. So they're constantly held in the torture dungeon in their subconscious. I began to resist my parents probably at the age of five. Just simply getting tired of the never-ending harassment, rape, brutalization, and torture. After church on Sunday morning, we would always go to the satanic church 